Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me. Paulina here talking to you a little bit about this full moon in Scorpio. It is quite late. I'm cutting it a bit short. And I do understand it is already the end of the 21st of April as I'm doing this. The moon is coming up very soon. So what can I do for you? I suppose I could touch on some topics that would be also relevant after the moon's passing. So this video still makes sense and gives you something. So for those that need to hear it, um, there is quite a lot of lust and fire and sexiness and trendiness and emotionality still left over from the Aries time. We are well and truly in Taurus now on the fourth degree. <clears throat> and um, as the moon will be passing for Scorpio, she's going to draw in a lot of opportunities and a lot of options, but they don't have to be that intense and they don't also have to be that plain. It is just about going and going and going, increasing velocity if you need to, but staying put. So it's about maturity, it's about smoothness, it's about a uh, couple of steps further than probably you thought you would be. So also some people do have definites um, that are already outlined for them by fate or by other people. There are certain people that are also playing games with dominance. We have, of course, Sun in opposition to the Moon. And then we have Pluto at a square to both. So Pluto balancing out Sun and Moon means that there are going to be people that are going to try and push the button. There's going to be a little bit of power play. There's going to be a little bit too much intention, too much emotions, too many very big ideas and maybe too much secrecy also. You know, some people are going to try to play it to their advantage. Don't go any further if somebody says, hey, come here, I got a plan. If that plan is too evolved, if that idea is too far, or if a person has their finger on the trigger, don't go with that person. If there is too much ado, and also if people are making sense of things that are not casually possible, and that are not natural, I would suggest stick to the plain and the more obvious results. So what I mean by that is, if it's not here and now, and if it's no uh, good for you already, and if it's not presenting uh, in front of you uh, as we speak, it probably won't need to be. Um, so in certain cases, people do need to reach for the stars a little bit. I understand that some people will have to do a little bit more um, stuff to be able to reach that result. And then also for quite a lot of us, um, if we really have it together and if we'd like to be put and have everything eventually served on the platter for us anyway, I suggest go with the obvious results. Uh, see the positive and what you already have got. Understand and respect other people. It's just about simplicity. It's about caring for yourself. It's about being within reason and still having some stability as you might be going for a few opportunities or options or as you might be accelerating into the next version of you. I do understand why people want to hop from one thing to another or they want to change things really quickly because um, Scorpio moon is the moon of transformation and there's also fortune next to Lilith. So there is a question mark. It's like, can you imagine, like, wouldn't it be fun to like do this again? Or can't you, can't you see that there's a loophole? Or what if we did this today? So there is definitely an adventurous side to the cycle and there are a lot of dreams. We have Mars close to Saturn and also close to Neptune. So we have Saturn, Mars, Neptune and Pisces. It's a really, really hard story that some people want to play out. It's a very, very demanding or even damaging narrative. In certain cases, it's going to be quite a lot of worth found though and things that you didn't think were worthy. Now, this is also very exciting to me on the other side. For certain people, there's going to be no more of some things. There are going to be endings and there's going to be results seen and things are just going to like be proudly resolved. And in certain people's lives, that comes with a lot of thought and a lot of yesteryear's uh, ideas. So, for example, you have a cupboard full of clothes, you don't know what to do with them. Um, these clothes could be a great bargain for somebody else. You know, if you have some hand-me-downs, if you have some cheap things that, you know, you found 
and you don't want to use them or like say you met many many people and now you have a lot of practice under your belt you got like a lot of contacts so you know a lot of people basically it's really nice to hand those things over to somebody else or to even sell them for a great price interestingly things that have been stored up for a long time are worthy of great money also scorpio brings out the wine the cheese you know the things that have been brewing for a long time i personally have sauerkraut in my house so maybe you have something else you have a collection um, we also have like a collection of ceramics at my place as well um, things that have been collected for a long time long lost or departed opportunities or options might be now really welcoming of a brand new start so not for every single person but in some case there might be a restart button on the previous era or choice making uh, in your life and in certain situations it won't be just that it'll be a remembrance and i also do speak um, a lot on my patreon channel uh, check it out by the way if you haven't yet um, about things coming back so the joy of youth coming back the joy of what you did as a kid uh, reaching out to coming back living in an era that resembles your childhood or having a repetitive pattern that came back for some reason and it's also very very dreamy to see things as what they are so after having lived a certain amount of time be it 30 20 40 years 70 years you have a certain understanding and an ideal and some of this moon is not necessarily about reaching out and telling people about how much you've struggled or how much you've conquered or what were the best years of your life although for some people that is the ideal it's more about yeah saving your resources and doing what you really love and really seeing the forest for the trees and being very handy and yeah very adequate and very still and very careful with how your life turns yeah it is also about maturity definitely and about avoiding unnecessary contrasts and for some people to some degree it is not about necessarily what you really want but what you've always kind of liked anyway so it is about remembering what you used to be into as a kid it is a, about the music that you used to listen to as a young adult maybe to some degree it is about wearing those things that you always loved so in certain situations it is definitely going to be um, not always but quite a lot of times reminiscent of something that you've done and left behind or it could be a memory of a memory of a memory or you could be with a person that reminds you of somebody else so it's a very very easy time to really seal the deal this time is really awesome for paperwork for signing things for a long time for doing things legitimately and yes marriages are really great buying property in certain cases is amazing at the moment um, certain property sales could be very good or doing things that are lucky not just because they're in the spare of the moment although there might be that juiciness to a lot of things that are happening at this at this point um, it is more lucky because it feels like something or somebody else so there's like a retro feeling we have retrogrades we have north and south node in retrograde and yes we do have uh, also uranus and jupiter together and yes we do have mercury retrograde and also venus and chiron uh, close to the north node and aries and um, there is going to be a lot of us thinking back when i was young or back when this uh, thing was cool you know back when i used to wear this jacket or back when i used to like you know hang out with mom so it's like you know going through the attic uh, at your parents house uh, looking at old ideas photographs realizing you kind of had it and finding the force and finding the gifts in that lay by reality so sometimes you might find a real bargain at a secondhand store or it might be actually you searching inside yourself and recognizing that you used to be like really freaking cool in your 20s and you don't want to let all of it go you want to actually conserve preserve and drop those insights or drop those ideas into your own life today into your own self so you want to go back to the classics i did speak a lot about this also um, for the reports um, for may 
uh, that will be coming out on Patreon shortly, um, there's a really good chance you've already got it. You've already had it or it has recently surfaced. A lot of people are trying to find the needle in the haystack or they're looking too far ahead of themselves or they're getting too far ahead of themselves. This has no purpose sometimes and it has no choice but to go through a lot of adjustments and quite a lot of us have many lessons in front of us if we don't fully recognize that which is already said and done. That which has already been evolved enough to be masterful and graceful in itself. And sometimes people have to understand I'm only human. A lot of this particular moon might actually lead certain people along a wave spell which demands certain life results and ideas or wants to experience certain stories that don't need to be experienced anymore ever again or they don't have to be launched. Some people are really afraid of, for example, missing out not living their life and not having enough uh, money or sustenance um, or not giving themselves enough opportunities, options previously in life. And there are definitely going to be some choices made in a retro way, you know, counting on the previous logic and the previous time spent. So that's the shadow side, you know, not all of it is uh, wrong as well. But yeah, there is a neediness to any uh, moon in Scorpio. There's going to be definitely a neediness and a wish and this big uh, willpower coming to the surface saying, hey, didn't you see uh, me? Like I could have done this years ago or like I can still launch this project or I can still have another go in my career. So for the really boring people out there that don't have any of this uh, today, maybe it's really, really time to um, get exact on things. I mean, if you like, um, this is the perfect moon to really think about what's going on. It is a wonderful moon to uh, go to the doctor's office. It is a beautiful moon to uh, sit down and think, why is your pot plant dying? Like say your pot plant is dying at home. Now you probably can see why. Uh, maybe it is about looking at people thinking, who is everybody in my story? It's about humming and hurrying and scratching your head and thinking, where did I go wrong? Why do things not develop the way that I wanted them to? So it is an alchemist's moon, of course, uh, every Scorpio moon would be. And it's also a little bit of a dangerous one because it kind of, in the sky that we have today, has no real purpose or meaning, but people really want it to be more meaningful than it can be. Um, if you look at this, at it this way, this is easier. Um, we are only in the second sign. So the year has started in Aries. Astrologically, we're only in the second sign. Things should still be very ABC. It's about clear thinking. It's about obvious things. It's about feelings. And some degree, at some point, it's going to be about memories. And there could be, uh, should be, or could have been, should have been feelings. Um, in some uh, situations, it's going to be about um, the next level insights on the previous stories and situations. Like you now understand what made you do this or, or that. You now have absolutely no question why uh, that was happening in your life or what for you did whatever you did. Um, so this also very kind of uh, acted out and it's also very uncomfortable in uh, some situations. People are trying to be exquisite, more exquisite than they can afford. People are making unrobust choices. Also, this is something very interesting People sometimes really want to sound important rather than really concentrate on who they are in the moment and what actually speaks to them. Uh, people would rather spend a lot of money on um, physical goods or uh, externalized goods. They don't actually really understand uh, how the world uh, goes and they don't actually think about uh, exercising restraint or um, doing things that are more foundational or more base. Um, it's very, very also good to see people going outside of the status quo because Jupiter and Uranus are conjunct and also Venus is relatively close to the sun behind it. So sometimes people want to beautify things even more than they can stand a chance beautifying them. So like, for example, this is a perfect time where somebody will pay so much money for the child's education, not actually knowing that this education may not be useful in some seven years down the track, for example, or, uh, you know, people wanting, for example, to 
uh, put new wallpaper on their walls or I don't know like decorate their home uh, while not actually being um, stationary and stable enough to see that yeah okay the home actually needs some groundwork maybe it's better to invest that money into the piping system maybe it's better to have a look at the groundwork structure of the home instead of just putting some wallpaper and flourishes around the house so there is definitely like no pain no gain feeling as well it's not all about that but I would definitely say that quite good stable adult decisions and like big time maturity is really laying in that nitty-gritty uh, fact in the fact so without facts without hard work without balancing things out without being careful without being mindful without kind of holding things in their place because Pluto is about control also as he is balancing the Sun and the moon there is need for precision there is need for really good uh, karma-free decisions later. There's need to be very right. And there's also need to keep it real and keep it relevant. And quite a few people, uh, maybe, uh, like in my life, in your life, maybe would actually start to become very karmic because they don't like to look at facts. They want to go somewhere else. So we need to understand fantasy people fantasy representation and um, doing things around the bend like people that are just uh, making their life for show and they don't have any uh, real possibility to learn anything or feel anything and I'm not sure if you're interested but uh, yeah I'll be now posting some audios on Patreon that are very kind of extreme and they talk about childhood and how to grow out of childhood um, how can I say patterns so how to walk away from the infantile self or the feeling of being unprotected or unworthy or unheard. So how to basically save yourself from all of these childhood issues that we still carry with us as adults. Um, that stuff is going to uh, maybe be good to look into uh, for some people. How to cut out these patterns of playing victim or different types of role playing that we still preserve from our family lines. And then also how to step in and just drive this thing, like how to work with your life, how to know um, where your resources are coming from, how to understand abundance, how to understand stability, how to understand your health and healing, or how to just basically get it, how to get it. And <coughs> sorry, um, there are a lot of us that I feel um, that are not going to be feeling really that phenomenal unless our life either resembles something that we've had before or looks like that uh, which our friends have achieved or looks like something that we see in the media or in the magazines there is quite a big question mark about this so there is um, definitely going to be a question mark about beautifying things and creating abundance but in certain cases it's not going to be within the spectrum of norm or like doability and then in certain other cases, it's not going to be at all about that. It's going to be about philosophies and design and redesigning things. And some things that certain people might imagine or uh, put into um, play could be very far-fetched and maybe very eloquently organized. So this is when, for example, somebody uh, creates that in their life, which is just not, it's not, it's not doable. It's not very organized later because it is still in the realm of whim you know so for example relationships are, are skyrocketing at the moment that are just imaginary sensuality and emotions that are childlike and doing things that maybe you don't necessarily have to do later in time but you believe yourself to need those things like for example there's a very OCD way of looking at life today uh, oh, I've got to do this, like say, I, I've got to use this cream on my face every single day, or I, I've got to patent this design, or I've, I've got to put this to work. So there's like a lot of flamboyance, and I'm seeing some really high rocketing developments for certain brands and companies. Also in terms of like um, logistics and like having to do things, like imagine having so much frill or so much uh, imagination or emotionality about some of your life that you can't actually put it together 
And I feel that's very, very important for many people to learn from. We are still living on planet Earth as uh, far-fetched and as comfortable as our lives may be. We still have to um, remind ourselves or imagine what would it be like uh, to live here for a long time. And yeah, we do have to think about the resources as well and how the life that we are living works on this plane. So that's like quite a big question for a lot of people but maybe um, not that much of my audience are really interested in that question today as I did really get the feels that most people are interested in their own personal lives and um, attainment uh, you know which is also correct and it's also very real and it's part of part of the job of doing this I just understanding that uh, compassionately and uh, yeah uh, there are a lot of uh, eager gamers. There's a lot of games. There is going to be a lot of gameplay um, during this year in general. So um, I feel that there is a lot of showiness and there's a lot of also showy truths. Um, a lot of people are just about the numbers, they're just about the money. And uh, for a few of us, it's going to be not easy to see also if your efforts are going somewhere uh, that you don't really see. Uh, protecting you later or you don't see being the world where you want to live for example you have been raising a child uh, this is really hard I'm sorry but this is hard for some people and uh, that child has been treated a certain way and they had certain curfews and certain truths given to them since they were a small child and now you can kind of see I don't think my child will go and follow my footsteps I don't think that my child is going to respect me when they get to a certain age I don't actually believe that my child would be there for me when I'm older or I don't see us uh, together as a family when we're going through a certain uh, timeline eventually. Um, that's really, really hard. Uh, so that's going to have to find its feet. Also supporting and funding things that are illogical and irrelevant. Uh, supporting things that you know have no root system. Uh, Taurus is very much about the root system. Um, knowing that there is a dream that you'd rather dream, it's like... You still keep on going to the university when you would rather travel. Or, for example, uh, you're going further and further with a relationship that is based entirely on attainment and sexuality, for example. Or you are buying, you keep on buying things that you may as well grow in your garden. Or you're doing things that will not work out in the end. And that is going to start to bring a lot of philosophies out. And I see how a lot of people would rather talk about it or argue about some things than actually do things themselves. So, I mean, I probably definitely suggest if you can handle it, if you're tough enough and if you're logical enough, have a look at the simple facts of daily life. It's uh, really great for me here. I mean, I live in the countryside in Peru, South America. Um, it's a very, very clear day-by-day uh, -day existence as um, I'm mostly surrounded by people that remember what it was like uh, to live here from the beginning and probably uh, will be here seriously till the end. Um, there is a very strong local culture and root system so I have a completely different mind about things now since living here but like say living in Australia, New Zealand or any other place in the world especially living in a metropolitan city it sort of gets to and eventually what uh, cause and effect other people have on their life and what they consider normal, what they consider beautiful, or what they consider desirable or uh, worthy of attainment is going to rule over the natural system. And uh, I don't want to like by any chance sound crazy to some people, but um, yeah, like the natural world, the real life, what, what is real? What is real? What is the truth? What is truth? What, what is the truth? A lot of people that go out there seeking, um, you know, they all ask that question and it's very, very uh, humble. Uh, the truth is nature. Nature is the primary uh, truth of this whole dimension. And if we want to destroy it or if we want to live above it or on top of it or if we want to crush it or if we want to have our say over our own nature and that of another also, or if we want to uh, create a hospitable environment only for ourselves and we want to like say for example kill every single insect that enters the house and you know we want to like support ourselves in such a way that is 
kind of uh, based on a computerized system or like this um, out of the uh, out of this world uh, ungrounded or unrooted way of life there is still going to be a question and a mind going on because uh, the question might be are you real uh, or is this for real which is a lot of uh, what this particular time might be about so there's strength in numbers if every single person in your community thinks um, for example frivolous sexuality is fun you might think uh, that it is fun you might even develop a taste for it and it might even start to become a game um, if every single person in your community or in your country believes uh, that money rules the world and there's nothing else uh, besides that um, that may be the only thing that you think about sometimes and it's just how it is is how the cookie crumbles so it's just like safety and numbers and uh, bigger and bigger game uh, also with this Pluto being Aquarius bigger and bigger game uh, being possible for people but the more you want, the more stress and pressure there is. Um, what, what would I suggest? I'm picking this a little bit because I actually understand that a lot of people have this very critical also view of themselves and each other. They're feeling very stressed out. A lot of people are feeling very stressed about what they've come here to support or perform as. People are in performance mode. It's like, can I perform? You know, can I perform at this job or can I perform as a great husband or wife? You know, can I can I help anybody that's also performance based? How can I best serve the world? I get this question a lot. This is probably one of the most mainstream questions, you know. And um, it's, it's seemingly an inverse of uh, how do I get what I want, but it's kind of like in a similar phase of development. How do I serve? How do I serve the world? How do I serve my country? How do I serve the beings? How do I serve Earth? It's not a very developed question. Um, so basically we have to come back to uh, this really nice, simple and niche uh, possibility of uh, learning and maybe even teaching something during this time. Uh, North Node does like a hero with Chiron and Mercury uh, and Venus also being there. So. Um, it has to be maybe relearned or retaught or re-equilibrated as to who we are in the game. It might be really important to see what other people are doing, but also not to station on them as your philosophers or your, your leaders and guides. It's really important to see what team you're playing for. It's wonderful to have a look as to what money is to you, what attainment is to you, what power is to you, or what sexuality is to you. And to really recognize it and try to unravel so it is just um, so seen and just so developed that you don't put yourself together in such a way which you will regret later on. Um, there is a congealing fixed energy, a congealing fixed stable and very robust signs of Taurus and Scorpio and also a fixed sign uh, Aquarius, Pluto in the middle. So it's not actually about just delivering, doing, thinking, going, acting, having some fun, having some love, you know, and having some extremes and, you know, going back home and just curling up and, you know, doing whatever you're going to do uh, for the rest of the day. It's more about growth. It is also more about, in some degree, uh, to some degree, adventures. And in some situations, it is about living those impossible dreams with Mars very close to Neptune. And also Venus being very close to the North Node. It's like, do I live a great life? Have I got... And then the people, you know, have I got enough muscles? You know, have I got a strong back? You know, like, have I got a good enough existence? Have I got a strong enough person next to me? Or have I got a great feeling of being an alpha, alpha male, alpha woman as well? Have I got all the many dreams and all the many visions met? Did I finally discover myself? Did I discover my sanity? Did I fully understand who I was? You know, Mercury next to North Node. Did I really reach that conclusion? And Jupiter next to Uranus, of course, to me, just basically represents a gift at the end of the day in that which has enough stability, slowness, passion of course but also resistance and durability so uh, uranus is not just about change so it's that like oh this means change right uranus likes change in electronics right you know it's about evolution right well actually um 
it's not about this. Sometimes there is a strong, hard yard that people had to go through to evolve. It's not just about like, oh, I woke up one day and there was a new app on my phone. Like, it's not just about that. It's um, about stimulation. It's about cooking things up. It's about natural resources to a degree, uh, as it is in Taurus as well. And it's almost entirely based on what was already. So Uranus doesn't just think of something automatically that just comes out of air. Now people, a lot of people think like that. They're like, the potatoes at the supermarket were just, were just given to the supermarket. I don't know where they're from. Like they don't know the chain of events that it took to birth that potato. They don't care about it. So the Uranus is about the long-term chain of events and having simplicity, important simplicity, fact, important, fact, fact, simplicity, fact, lack of doubt, regularity, important for Uranus to function, normality, and significance for certain things to be born again or born anew, or some things to die and be kind of resurrected or shifted into the next phase, or to pop up out of nowhere as if they were never before. Nothing is just out of thin air. Everything has a chain. So um, the question and answer response, you know, the question and answer um, connected to another and another, another, another energy or it connected to itself so strongly that it made a Uranian experience, you know. So if things have been compacting for such a long time they've been preserving for such a long time or they made so much sense for such a long time that pop goes the lid and inside is something beautiful just like my um sauerkraut at home pop goes the lid and here you have beautiful probiotic rich treasure so i suppose what i could say is um it's not necessary to build anything above your own means. It's not good to walk out there and suddenly say, hey, guess what? I'm talented. Or like, hey, guess what? Guess who I am? It's a very bad time to suddenly uh, flash those coattails. And it was also kind of a dangerous time uh, to go and give the impression that you were not that and now you are this. And it is also a very cultural and big and kind of grieve and grieving time to make things matter that shouldn't have mattered before. So some people have really packed an identity together. And even if they were sitting in front of a lie detector test or like one of the greatest psychics ever, they would never tell the truth because they don't understand what the truth is or they don't remember what the truth is. So if somebody put a lie detector, you know, uh, sensor on them and ask them, are you an alien from outer space? Some people will say, absolutely, yes, I am an alien from outer space. And the lie detector wouldn't even pick it up. So that feels like it's true, but it's not, obviously. Um, most people, many people really are lying. We have uh, Lilith uh, really big in the game at the moment, most of the DC, but they are also coming true, certain lies are coming true. If a person has brainwashed themselves to believe they were always great, even if they've got nothing to show for it, they are also somehow in the running or in the making of being a great. If a person has always believed they were going to make it famous or if they were always going to like get the best deal, sometimes, yeah, their brainwashing of themselves makes it certainly so. And to some degree, this Jupiter Uranus also believes in things that have not or could not have ever hatched. It believes in the vulnerability sometimes more than it does in the project. So sometimes that irony of like, say, a kooky, crazy person winning it big or like a complete train wreck becoming famous or somebody who is not gifted to be offered a very high position in life. Um, so in a sense, there is this kind of weird uh, beggar and, um, you know, the hierarchy uh, situation. And sometimes it can flip on its head to be flipped again. 
So there's like a very, very uh, big fear also of weirdness. Um, there's also a big fear of danger in that which is not so. And sometimes Uranus can bring up great options and great opportunities and give us really great remarks and suggestions. And sometimes it is just going to bring that energy upwards, which is actually, how can I say, it needs to be severed like it's old fashioned or it is not viable it's not credited it's not good enough but sometimes the world kind of wants to see that and some people would rather like uh, how can I say uh, go for a uh, badly created product or they would go for a strange personality online um, than actually give to themselves the stuff that feeds the root system so escapism and avoidance yet yeah, to a degree but there's also not just this because also Mars is at a sextile to this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. It's not just about this escapism and avoidance. People don't like you if you are too truthful sometimes. People don't feel compassionate about things that are too honest or too belittling sometimes. If we are not wise or if we are not uh, contained, we will be fearful of certain things that would trigger us or scrutinize us there's a massive shadow also of Scorpio there as well um, we feel uh, fearful and sometimes we feel lied to by society or lied to by our mother and father so we want to like kind of uh, trick the world or flip it upside down so that means that in some way uh, certain childish thoughts and feelings and the children within ourselves or the children in the home might get uh, recognized beyond their means. So for example, your child um, did not really do that much work, but they won a scholarship. This is one of those things. Or your childish dreaming or childish thoughts and feelings and wishes and a silly song that you wrote when you were 17 years old is getting all the attention today. So in certain, it's, it's like a little quantic joke. It's, it's not actually that quantic, it's a little silly um, and predictable. In certain situations, which is part of Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, um, in certain situations, there is no question, no need for some things to take place. In certain situations, there are just inadequate things. There is uneasy feelings because things are too awkward or random. There's not enough wisdom. There's not enough real care or truth to many things. And yet we are still going to choose them in certain cases there will be more rapturous, crazy, uh, sexy, menacing behavior um, to mask that real guilt and that real need for safety. So there are, or there is um, a phenomenon, there is a phenomenon happening. Uh, people don't feel secure inside themselves. They don't feel very good about who they are and what they've got in their life. And here they go doing crazy stuff. Here they go uh, reinventing uh, who they were or who they've never been. Here they go making jokes about things that they shouldn't make jokes about. Here they are also implanting ideas that don't actually stand any chances and also questionable behavior, questionable behavior, irregular, strange, odd ideas and situations are very likely during this year in general specifically during this time. So basically what I can do for you there, how to work your way out of childish arrogance and like the disease of the age, which is doing things upside down. Black is white and white is black. Red is yellow and yellow is green. You know, like people try to mix things up. People want it all to make sense on their terms. And they're basically uh, ignoring base facts. Mm, and I do also understand that a lot of people are getting very wealthy that way and a lot of personalities are winning because they're so kind of sick in the head for the lack of better words um, so how to avoid the intimacy with contrast so what I mean by that is like oh, I'm cheap and irregular and I'm a crazy person a crazy 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 person and that makes me cool you know so like it's so odd it's so awful it's hot and most people that are going to offer themselves to that or that offer that energy a place in their life or at their table 
most people that would, for example, give scholarships to unlearned children or adults, most people that would be thankful if somebody crazy and weird sat next to them uh, or came into their life, um, will inevitably have to math this out. And the maths is very simple. What's the use? Using things, yeah, that's Taurus. What's the point? Why did this person say that this is hard? Also hard for me sometimes. I've been raised in a community of artists when I when I was growing up as a kid, so it's hard for me. Uh, what's the point of this? Why'd you do this? Like that. Why'd you buy that? Uh, what did you say? What did you mean? Why did you say that? You know, anything questionable is important to notice because it's very, very easy to walk away with some crazy philosophy like, I paid thousands of dollars like to see the show and wow, and I got like a VIP pass. Oh my God, I'm so happy. You know, so people spending money, it's not just spending money, attention, energy, resources, they are walking their feet towards uh, dubious, flat, um, 2D cutout experiences that don't have any root system that are not going to be fun later on in life. Or they're walking with that which is of chaos or that which is uh, superficial. Superficiality cannot stand this um, energy that is happening in the sky today. So if you especially feeling that you're acting out or somebody with you is acting out or you cannot handle this person or you cannot handle that, wow, you've got to like shut down the, the TV, I can't look at this person on TV, I can't look at this, I can't see this, I can't, I can't handle it. Um, this means, that means that there is something um, not uh, good, not stable. This has no fidelity or you don't have enough confidence in yourself uh, to allow your natural human shyness to be there. So that's what some, uh, some people may not agree with me, but to me, why we are here and what we're doing is to learn, explore, and experience, and to a degree, one of the most genius and natural concepts of the human uh, beings is uh, shyness and sensitivity. If you don't feel that clarity, if you don't feel that purity, if you don't feel a little shy sometimes and a little vulnerable, um, which is normal uh, for most animals in the world to feel, most animals, as we too are, a mammal, oh no, yes, yes, uh, to a degree, to an extent, um, it's really, really good to let those sensitive feelings feel, um, but if we don't feel and we just poke, 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 like say we go here, go there, we project, you know, we want sex, but we don't want love, you know, we want money, we don't want to work, you know, we want this, but we don't want that, if we're just poking, if we are pokey, we forget that feeling and that sensitivity that it actually takes to be a human being. And also sometimes, yeah, what it takes to be a hunter, a gatherer, or just what it takes to be here is uniqueness, yeah, of course. But it also is um, very much about knowing fact for what it is, knowing fact from fiction, knowing sour from sweet, you know, knowing the smells. You can tell what is a good and what is not so good smell. You can tell what is a good and not so good feeling. You can see what is and what isn't good for you. So in a very, very primal sense, if you really want to walk into your primal senses, which would be a winning thing to do, it's a winning tool for any toolkit. Even if you work for the media, you're far away from everyday reality. Uh, the primitive uh, joys, the previous uh, feelings will be unimportant if you walk into your simple animal feeling, sensing, smelling, you know, seeing self. Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, will say, I love the concept. Wow, what a cool idea. But it's like, but do you like the texture? Do you like the smell? Do you want to interact with it? Do you feel anything? And most people are like, no, 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 no. But this would make money, though. So this is where I'm basically trying to take you back a little bit because a lot of people would not want anything that speaks to their senses appropriately or they may not necessarily wish for that which they actually need and physically, biologically um, know that they have to understand. Like people will not want 
natural decisions. People may not want simple, natural understandings. They would rather have something shiny out there on the surface of their life. Um, like they wouldn't want to look at a real person uh, without a filter or without uh, some kind of a veneer. Like it is almost like rude to be, you know, on camera without makeup, you know, and, you know, adequate lighting. Or it's it's so rude, you know, to, to say the words without masking what you're really feeling. So basically it's just about coming back to the animal self. And if you do like this topic, if it spoke to you, have a look. I have uh, just posted, or I'm in the process of posting audios for the inner child work, which is quite quite a brutal little audio series on Patreon. And also, I'm going to be posting, or I have already posted, a audio work, it's like one hour, uh, on understanding why you have certain... Um, feelings and how to work with the inner animal instincts and animal obsessions and animal anxieties so um yeah um once again dragon year is about maturity it's about the rhythms of the heart it's about taking your body to the next level and being alpha or at your most alpha state at your most adequate state you know, that doesn't actually necessarily mean that you have to look good to other people. It's just about being in top performance and top function and also top health and top healing. So it's a very, very good year to feel fine. And not many people um, are prepared, I feel, for these questions that we already have coming up to the surface. But it is all about that. And if you don't want to look at your animal self, if you don't want to look at your body, if you don't want to look at the natural and the not so natural, um, you will probably have to speak to somebody else. Thank you very much. And also if my uh, channel speaks to you, you can get a reading with me and have a look at my Patreon also. Okay, thank you so much. Um, nice to see you and well, nice to talk soon. And I'll see you next time. Bye.